Welcome, Hunter, to the world of Monster Hunter Now. My name's Zach, and this is your ultimate beginner's guide to Monster Hunter Now. Before we start, this is an augmented reality game created by Capcom and largely Niantic, the creators of Pokemon Go. So you'll need to leave your house to play this game, or just farm the stuff at your house every three hours when the spawns refresh, and then complain online angrily about how this free game is ruining your life and how you couldn't possibly play any other monster game in the history of Monster Hunter game at home or any other game in the history of video game. Anyway, when you first start your game, you'll be prompted to create your character. If you're like me, you'll spend at least an hour here getting every meticulous detail just the way you like it. But remember, you can change this at any time. So if you want to get right into the action, you can breeze through this quickly. I won't be though. The choices are somewhat limited, but there's a lot here. You can change gender, skin color, hairstyle, hair color, face type, facial hair, facial makeup, and your voice. Then enter your display name and you're off. This can be changed later too. This footage is from the soft launch and the game actually forces you to breeze through it, but even immediately after you start the game, you can go into your character and customize everything. You'll immediately be thrown into the action when you meet a Palico, attacked by some Jagras. You get some basic equipment, including a sword and a shield, and you're tasked with saving the Palico by defeating the Jagras. A Palico in the Monster Hunter universe is a feline that has created a pact with hunters to support them in battle. The word Palico is a job title for these companions, which are part of the Linian species and a feline subspecies. The name Palico is a play on the words pal and calico. The word pal means friend in English and calico is a type of cat. Palico and Monster Hunter Now will assist you by gathering when your phone is locked or idle as long as you have Adventure Sync turned on, and it can hold six items in its pouch, so you'll need to help out the little furball and unload his pouch every once in a while. Palicos can also paintball random monsters for you to hunt later. You can also throw your own paintballs too. The in-lore purpose is to hit a monster with paint, so that way you can track them when they run away, and you can see the paint drops, and you can follow the paint trail that they cause to track them down and fight them when you're ready. In Monster Hunter Now, the purpose of paintballs is to save them in your phone so that you can fight those monsters later when you're at home or in a safe place. If you want other hunters to hunt this monster with you, they must scan your QR code and be within 200 meters to fight alongside you. To fight, you simply have to tap your screen and your hunter will swing their sword. If you tap multiple times, your hunter will do a combination of sword swings and shield dashes. When you defeat these Jagras or any enemy, you'll collect some pieces of the monster that you break or cut off. We'll cover that in a little bit. Once you finish off the three Jagras in front of you, you'll move on with the story. The Palico will teach you to move the screen by dragging and pinching and zooming to zoom in or out. If you're familiar with Pokemon Go, this will be second nature to you. Then, you'll see a figure fly down from the sky, landing with absolutely no fall damage. Very on brand for Monster Hunter. This is a woman named Qualili. Her, the Palico, and the monsters all come from a different world. The world of Monster Hunter, colliding with our world in a fashion similar to the conjunction of the spheres from The Witcher. Now she asks you to help her take care of the monsters that have invaded our world and help her unravel the mystery of why all these monsters have shown up suddenly. Now is your time. She asks a pivotal question. Do you become a hunter? If you click no, then I, I guess that's the end of the game. Like, go back inside. You've successfully touched grass. Unless, like, you start playing this game on your couch or something. But if you click yes, then she just kind of thanks you. And you can take on quests and start playing Monster Hunter now, for real. Your hunter rank goes up, and you'll need to fight a great Jagras as your first real mission, because the hunter from another world cops out, because what? Fall damage suddenly applies now that she fell into our world? Oh well, we'll leave the story there and go over combat. You already know how to attack by tapping on your screen. But to dodge incoming monster attacks, you'll need to swipe on your screen. Doing so allows you to dodge roll. The game tells you that monsters will turn red before they attack, but that isn't true for all attacks. If it looks like it's about to hurt you, it probably is, and you'll need to dodge. Because this is an action game, the hit and hurt boxes are pretty realistic with a few exceptions. You'll learn them over time. You have a 75 second timer in the top left corner to defeat any monster that you come across. That's because mobile game, but also because the developers wanted to make sure that you could actually like take down a monster while sitting on a sidewalk out in the sun, or waiting at a bus stop, or doing something that only takes 75 seconds. Because in mainline Monster Hunter games, battles can take anywhere from like 5 minutes to an hour. So they wanted to be conscious of this being a mobile game where you're moving around the real world so that you could stay safe. Anyway, you'll need to beat every monster in that time limit, at least until maybe Elder Dragons are released and maybe you'll do some kind of raid or some kind of like longer battle, I don't know. If you run out of time, the battle will end 
end in failure, even if you're at full health and the monster is at 1 HP. So keep that in mind. You do have maybe one second of leeway after the timer is out to get another hit in. Sometimes this literally can be the deciding strike of the battle. If you take damage in battle, you'll be knocked down and staggered for a moment before you can get up. There are skills that you can acquire later to make this knockback not so bad if you choose to invest in that. If your health is depleted before the timer runs out, then you have two options. You can use a first aid medicine or a potion to restore 50 HP and continue the battle. Or you can retire and try again later when your health automatically regenerates. It regenerates at a rate of one health per 35 seconds and you need at least 30% of your full health to challenge any monsters. So you'll be waiting a while if you run out of potions and you need to fully regenerate naturally. That being said, you're provided with five first aid medicines daily, and you never have to buy potions if you don't want to. Go watch Netflix, go watch a few videos by handsome monster hunter YouTubers, I mean, anyone would do for like an hour, and then come back and challenge the beasts again. If you want to buy potions, I'm not gonna judge you, but you should take some time learning your weapon by fighting the lesser monsters in the area and learning the timing of your dodge as well as how to block. Every weapon has a unique ability that you initiate by holding down your finger on the screen. Since you start out with a sword and shield, the skill is to block. So if you don't want to try and swipe and dodge, or you think there isn't enough time, you can simply block the monster's attack with your shield. Just be aware that you'll get a slight knockback effect if you block it. This can be negated with skills that are in, but not limited to Baroth armor. More on that later. And with that small knockback, you'll take one HP of damage. Think about it like, you blocked this great attack and defended most of the damage, but a spark flew off of the shield and burned you. Or, ugh, you got sand in your eyes from the attack. I personally like to be immersed in the game. So if it's the end of the fight and you have one HP left, do not block, you will be defeated. Also, the red glowing attacks of monsters can be blocked. Just remember, you'll take one HP of damage every time you block, but it's better than 20 or a one hit KO or something. Dispatching monsters will earn you Zenny, which is the currency of the Monster Hunter world. You can use this to pay for upgrades to your armor and weapons, but the more important reward for defeating the monsters is the monster parts. In the mainline Monster Hunter games, if you defeat a monster, you carve the monster parts off of them. You do this with like a side knife that you have as a hunter. This is happening off screen in Monster Hunter now, but either way, you gain monster parts and you have the option to double your rewards using gems. Don't do this unless you are fighting an extremely rare monster and you want to spend real world money because that's what you're doing when you spend gems, you're spending real world money. I'm not saying don't support the game, but this game is free to play and you do not have to spend gems if you do not want to. The monster parts are so important because you use them to craft weapons and armor to fight stronger monsters in the future. This is a huge part of the game that we will revisit in just a moment. Once you do a few more missions, you'll be prompted to gather materials. For the rest of the game, you'll find these in places similar to Pokestops of Pokemon Go and gathering points are very important in the early game. But their importance starts to fall off as you rise because the monster parts become more important. Once you gather, your palico will help you upgrade your weapon. In the mainline games, you need a dedicated, highly skilled blacksmith that has trained in the art of blacksmithing for years. But in this game, I guess your palico is a blacksmith palico? Or maybe Qualili is a blacksmith. Does she do anything in this game? And now we have completed the main gameplay loop of the game. Gather herbs, ores, bones, and bugs, and defeat monsters and get their parts, craft new weapons and armor, or upgrade your existing equipment. That's sort of all you do. It seems simple, but there's almost an endless depth and complexity even in the streamlined entry into the Monster Hunter series. The battles will get more and more challenging with the monsters speeding up, hitting harder, and gaining new movesets as you gain HR and star ranks. When you craft new armor, you gain skills that you may not have had before, or unlock new skills by upgrading. When you need that new weapon that looks amazing, or does the elemental weakness that you've been needing, it gets harder and harder to find the materials needed. This seems like a negative, but this is what's so satisfying about Monster Hunter. Conquering this challenge either solo or with your friends, and crafting the coolest looking armor, or defeating an incredibly challenging enemy because you've built yourself up through the flames of the forge and the countless wyverns you've slain. But do not rush this process in Monster Hunter Now. This is a marathon, not a sprint. And if you progress too fast, you will hit a wall. So the recommendation from the community at large who have participated in the soft launch is to slow down at the beginning. Enjoy the game, gather many, many times, 
battle all of the monsters at your current star rank until you have ample materials and can craft many armors and weapons before you progress. The recommended stopping point is once you've unlocked four star monsters. This is when you unlock Rathian. Play the game as fast as you want and rush to level up and revel in the hype of the early game. But once you hit four star monsters, stop there and grind for a long time until you have all of the weapons and armor you'd like to have and you've brought them up to at least grade five. Once you're above four star monsters, it's very rare to see anything lower than a five star monster. So if you need a material for an armor or weapon that is dropped by a lower star monster, then that lower material now becomes your rare material. The most common weaknesses for monsters are thunder and water, so make sure to craft at least weapons with those elements. While you're crafting, however, make sure not to waste zenny. It takes at least 3,000 zenny a pop to bring a weapon to grade five. Speaking of upgrading, your weapons will do more damage and may gain abilities as they level up. For example, the Kuluyaku Longsword, the first dance, starts out with 100 attack, but also has 5% affinity, which is a skill that allows you to deal critical hits. And these critical hits deal 25% more damage than your normal attack, but it only affects your raw damage number, not elemental damage. So for example, if you had a weapon with 100 attack and 20 water element, you would deal 125 damage and 20 water damage not 125 damage and 25 water damage. I hope that makes sense. The percentage of affinity listed is the frequency of when the critical hit will activate. So the first dance will deal 100 damage per strike, but 5% of those strikes will deal critical hits that are worth 125 damage. All of this is for only one skill in the game. You can see how in-depth the systems can get. Upgrading your weapons will increase their damage and special abilities, like the elemental damage or affinity, and will also change the look of your weapons as you go higher. There are so many weapons and armors to craft, but in the early game, some personal recommendations are. All of these are going to be early game, before you unlock any of the other weapons, so I'm only going over sword and shield. I can make a specific armor and weapon guide in the future. For an offensive playstyle, stick with your iron sword until you can get to Baroth and craft its sword. If you get this sword to grade 4, then you get a defense boost 1. For the headgear, go with Kulu for the mail, go with leather for the arms, use Kulu again. For the waist, go with leather again, and for the legs, go with Kulu again. Using this mix set will give you the ability lock on, plus 20 attack damage, it increases your defense by 50 when your health drops to 29% or lower, plus 10 health, and increased affinity by 10% if everything is at grade 2. If everything is at grade 4, you'll gain lock on, plus 20 attack damage, plus 10 health, increased defense by 50% when your health drops to 29% or lower, defense plus 20, decreased damage from fire element monsters by 10%, increased affinity by 20%, and decreased damage from water element monsters by 10%. Or you could go with a paralyzing mix set. For this, stick with the iron sword again until you get to the Jiros, craft the Jiros weapon to take advantage of the paralysis attack, go with Kulu for the head, leather for the mail, Jiros for the arms, Jiros for the waist, and Kulu for the legs. This gives you lock on, plus 20 attack, increased damage by 10% when attacking a monster from behind, an increase in your weapon's paralysis buildup by a value of 50, and increased affinity by 10% at grade 2. And if you get all this to grade 4, you gain lock on, plus 20 attack damage, increased attack damage by 10% when attacking a monster from behind, increased weapon paralysis by a buildup value of 50, increased affinity by 20%, a decrease in the damage of fire element monsters by 10%, and lower level earplugs, which slightly reduces the effect of weak monster roars. Or you could just keep it really simple and go with full Kuliaku armor. For a defensive playstyle, you could try going for the Jagras Sword and Shield, Baroth for the head, Jiratotus for the male, Leather for the arms, Baroth for the waist, and Puke Puke for the legs. This gives you 10 extra HP, plus 60 defense, and plus 50 water attack at grade 2. And if you upgrade everything to grade 4, you get 20 extra HP, plus 60 defense, water attack plus 50, and you have a 20% chance of preventing getting poisoned when damaged by a poison element attack. So Puke Puke and especially Rathian will not poison you 20% of the time. And an increase in your defense by 50 when your health drops below 29%. But those are literally just a couple of options you have available to you. I could stay here all day explaining all the different combinations of the things that you could make. 
but I've put a link in the description to an amazing resource provided by Glenn from Singapore. It goes over all the weapon and armor skills and where you can find them. Speaking of the Singapore community, a few of them have made recommendations that makes a lot of sense. Focus on your weapons as much as possible first. If you invest your resources into weapons, then the weapons do more damage, and you spend less time hunting monsters, therefore being able to hunt more monsters, and then invest in your armor once you can't upgrade your weapons more due to rarity constraints. Just note that this will make you sort of a glass cannon at first, but if you learn to play the game really well, then you won't get hit as much, and you can play this way. Some high level tips for combat are, you obviously tap to attack and swipe to dodge. However, even if you swipe, if your attack animation is only halfway done, you cannot dodge. The game will not allow you to dodge if you're mid attack, so be wary of that. And time your strikes properly. Learning the attack patterns of monsters is super important. Study and recognize the monster's attack pattern. For example, if a Rathalos attacks with its fire breath, then there's a 75% or so chance of it doing a tail swipe, or a 25% or so chance of it rushing at you. Once you've studied the pattern, Patterns, it'll be easier for you to dodge and counter. Most of the monsters at launch will use similar attacks that you'll want to watch out for. Post-launch added monsters may have completely different moveset patterns, just be aware of that. Breath attacks. This could be fire, water, poison, paralysis, or many other elements and ailments. But if you see a monster move its head in a circular pattern a little bit, it's most likely going to shoot a breath attack at you. Tail swipes. Usually done after a monster sort of looks behind itself. A tail swipe is a sweeping attack that is hard to dodge because of the lateral movement, but you can dodge away from it by swiping towards yourself, or try to pre-dodge away from it, or roll towards and through it. If you time a roll perfectly, you take no damage and you'll do like a critical dodge. Charges. Charges are exactly what they sound like. The monster opens its mouth and charges forward at you, mowing you down if you get hit by it. There are flying attacks, claw attacks, digging attacks, and even backflips. But those three are the main movements you'll see and reliably predict. Monsters can also roar to varying degrees of volume, but if it's loud enough, your hunter will be stopped in their tracks and forced to cover their ears, leaving you open to attack. To avoid getting stopped, you have two options. You could grind for armor that has the skill earplugs. You'll need earplugs level three, four, or even five to really see a difference in gameplay, but the lower levels will negate weaker monster roars, so it doesn't hurt to have them if you just happen to have them on a piece of armor. It's not like they have negative skills like they used to have back in the day. You'd have to build armor sets around the negative skills and account for those when you build. But another way to avoid monster roars is to dodge through them. If you time it perfectly, then you'll be able to dodge right through a roar. But I mean perfectly. Glenn is a high level player from Singapore, and he tried to get me some b-roll of this, and he failed multiple times. So it's not his fault, it's just really hard to do. The timing is precise. Each weapon also has a special skill that is unique to that weapon style. You press that big old button there to activate it. It's good practice to go into a hard battle with your special skill fully charged. Each weapon has its own unique special skill, and when you activate it, you are invulnerable for the duration of the skill. Not to mention that if it hits, it does a ton of damage. Every monster has breakable parts. If you break one, you'll get an extra reward item at the end of the fight. You can break parts of the monster such as the face or horns, legs or claws, tails, and other parts depending on the monster. If you want to make the most of targeting monster parts, grab the Kuliyaku helm like I've been recommending and get it to grade 2 so that you can target the parts directly via a skill. If not, you don't need the skill, you can just be a skilled player and attack those parts. The game is more flexible than you think. Note that if you are hunting for a specific monster part like a tail, each breakable part has the ability to be a few different monster parts based on a percentage. So for example, if you're cutting off a lot of tails, looking for a monster tail, there is only a percentage that you'll get that drop. It may drop just like a scale or other pieces. The way I've always justified it in my mind lore-wise in the other Monster Hunter games is that I went too hard and destroyed the tail instead of just making a clean cut. So if a weapon or something needed a whole tail and I cut it into shreds, instead of one big piece, then at least I could salvage something from it like a scale. It's really just RNG, but I like having a headcanon for most things to keep myself immersed in the role I'm playing in any game. If you're hunting for a specific material, just check your hunter's notes on the monster that you need the part from and hunt the lowest star rarity monster that will drop that item. That way you can grind more of them, getting you the item faster. Don't forget that in those notes, it lists every monster's weakness, so make sure you check that before you go into battle. You don't have to use a monster's weakness to defeat it, but in most cases, that will defeat it faster. Speaking of weaknesses, you'll know when you're hitting a weak spot of the monster if the damage numbers are yellow instead of white. If you hit those weak parts with the proper elemental weakness, 
those numbers will turn red. Monster spawns refresh every three hours, so if you've cleared out your area and can't go anywhere, set a timer and check back in a couple hours. Shortly after you get out of the prologue, you can craft different weapon styles, not just sword and shield. The weapons other than sword and shield are longsword, greatsword, bow, bow gun, and I saved the best for last, hammer. I mean, look at this hammer gameplay. So satisfying. And now that we're reaching the end of the guide, I'll leave you with uh, things I wish I knew before starting, or a TLDR, if you wanted to hear something really quick. One, save Zenny and items like Monster Bone Medium and Makalite Ore. It's really fun to explore other armors, but your materials will be insufficient if you create a lot of different types of armors or weapons super early. Two, save the potions and paintballs rewarded to you and given up to HR 11. Use it for six to seven star monsters in the future. Trust me, paintballs are not worth it for Paolumu. Three, once you've unlocked four star monsters, which is unlocking Rathian, stop the adventure quest and grind for rarity one to four item drops. Because once you unlock five star monsters, more five star monsters will appear and it'll be harder to kill them if you're not prepared. Four, tap to attack, swipe to dodge, hold to block, or your weapon's unique movement, but time those attacks properly because you can't dodge or do anything else if the attack animation is moving. Study and recognize those monster attack patterns, it is the key to success. Five, at the beginning, don't join hunts that are above your means. Let's say you're capable of killing a four-star Rathian alone, but you're having trouble killing five-star Paolumus, and you see a join hunt button, and it's a five-star Diablos. You might not want to join unless there's also a way stronger HR player that also joined the party with you, because you might sabotage the host. The more hunters that join the hunt, the more stacked the HP of the monster will be, but the damage dealt by the monster will remain the same. This basically means that they get more spongy the more people there are, so you all may not die, but if you're not putting out enough damage, then your timer will run out. Six, you can add friends and you can play with random people. Hunt with others to maximize your rewards, but try to stick to stuff you know and can defeat if you are hunting with random people. Speaking of friends and referral codes, please use Glenn's referral code in the description down below. And please thank him in the comments. I literally would not have been able to make this guide without him and he helped immensely. And this was literally the only thing he asked of me. Glenn, you're a legend. 7. Like I said before, it's free to play. It's really not worth spending money on wander orbs, etc. HP will regenerate fully in about an hour. 8. Certain weapons in the game are pretty OP early, like Kuluyaku's longsword because it provides affinity, and when you bring it to higher grades, the damage gets really high. Critical Eye is a key skill for damage output. 9. Remember, items shown to be dropped by monsters are not 100%. So if you know a monster drops an item and you're not getting it, don't give up, keep grinding, you will get it eventually. 10. Once all the weapons are unlocked, play a few rounds with all of them to see which one you like. Even if you're a veteran like me, the weapon might feel different in this game. Once you have a weapon you like the gameplay style of, invest heavy into that weapon. There is so much more to cover, even though this is a mobile version of Monster Hunter. The Monster Hunter universe has a storied history of other games, so try them out if you haven't in the past, but I'm super glad to have a dedicated Monster Hunter mobile game to play daily, and I cannot wait to see where this game goes. Like this video if it was helpful, or even if it wasn't, like it anyway, because this was a lot of work, and subscribe so you can go on this hunting journey with me. Now, Hunter, get out there and get hunting.